Hey, what's up, coach? Welcome back to my podcast. Now, today I'm going to tell you a story. This happened in 2012, and this really opened up my mindset with what's possible. And I really hope this helps you. Hopefully, there are certain nuggets in this episode that you can take and implement within your own life or business. And, you know, This is something that was a pretty pivotal moment in my mindset when this happened, and uh, I'm excited to tell you. Okay, so in 2012, I already had a business, um, and I remember things were, were going pretty good. And I got this email from a guy named Bedros Koulian. You, you may know who he is. I've talked about him before, but... He was like my first, I would say my first real mentor. And uh, he had this email go out. It was about this big uh, summit that they were putting together. And it was called Fitness Business Summit. And they don't have it anymore. They they retired it a couple years ago. And uh, he did this thing once a year where like hundreds and and I think when I went there was over a thousand people. But. Uh, a lot of people from all over the world that uh, were following this guy uh, came to his fitness business summit and it'd be like three days of learning and there'd be these speakers there that were like at the top of their industry sharing marketing advertising sales stuff that helps personal trainers and and This was like for fitness people. It wasn't for like people in sports. And uh, so everyone there that that was like in attendance had a like boot camp type of business or a fitness business. Again, no one was doing anything sports related. At least no one I met was. And uh, when I got this email about the summit, it talked about all the things that we were going to learn. And all the networking opportunities and all this stuff. And I remember getting the email and thinking, man, I need to get to this thing. And as you probably know, I I live in Texas. This thing was in California. And my business at that point, I remember it was early 2000, I believe, actually it was 2011, sorry. Um, My business wasn't doing extremely well. Uh, I didn't have a lot of money to invest into going something like this. And it was expensive. Like, I had to pay for the ticket to get into the summit, which was not it was not cheap. Uh, then I had to pay for my flight. And I remember staying in, like, a really bad hotel. <laughs> and I get out there, and I try to stay in a hotel that is, like, right next to the event so I can just walk there. And I get there, and, and I remember the first morning. It was it was so clear. I get there. They have, like, free coffee and muffins. And I sit down, and, and back then I was very introverted. I still am introverted, but I was, like, so introverted back then. Like, I didn't really want to talk to him. I just wanted to go and learn. And I remember this guy, he, he looked younger than me. Uh he looked like he was probably like 20 and I was like, you know, 21, 20, I was like 22, 23 at the time. And he sat next to me and he started just like talking to me and he was like, yeah, where are you from? What do you do? And and he was real interested in the stuff that I do. And, and, and one of the questions he goes, how much money do you make? <laughs> and I felt very defensive when he asked me that. Cause I was like, wow, like no one's ever asked me that. And I told him, and he was like, he was like, oh, that's cool. Um, and I was like, well, I need to ask you how much money you make. So then I asked him, and he was like, yeah, I normally do like 20K a month. And keep in mind, the number that I told him was like significantly lower than that. And instead of me feeling 
like jealous, I I looked at him. I was like, dude, that is so awesome. Like, how are you doing that? And he spent like the next five minutes just breaking it down. He was like, well, like I had to get really good at sales. And he was like, I came to this event last year and I, I learned that. And, and really now I just focus a lot on marketing and we have other trainers that are fulfilling the sessions. And that like short five minute chat, like me flying there and me paying for the ticket and me doing all of that, like the investment to go there, like I could have and I should have paid 10 times the amount just to have this one conversation. It was like a one five to 10 minute conversation. And I could have left that day before the event started with like the action steps that I needed to take in my business because like this and, and again, I didn't approach him. He approached me. <laughs> so I remember thinking, though, when he told me about really the opportunity and it wasn't just the money. It was like he he showed me the opportunity that is possible. It made me really rethink not what I was doing, but it made me rethink really the potential. And again, this is not about the money. When, when I say this, this is about the potential of the business and how many more kids could be helped and the possibility of bringing on another coach and, and having someone else do the coaching for me. And I wasn't thinking about it in that way. I was thinking, well, it's my business, so I'm going to do all the training and, and, and I'm going to do all the sessions. And when I was talking to this guy who's younger than me, he already had a team of people in place running sessions. And he pulled out his phone. He's like, yeah, here's, here's the sessions this morning. Like, and he showed me a picture of their lead trainer that took a photo of all of their clients. Like while he was at this event, his business was still working. And I remember that week when I left, I had to like cancel all my sessions because I was going to this event and I, I wanted to like go with a clear mind. I didn't want to do a bunch of sessions and then go. And I was just blown away by this kid. I was absolutely blown away about how how he had his things set up. And I just had, I had never seen that before. And again, this was like my first event I've gone to. So I was like already super pumped up going into the event. And I remember it was just hilarious. At the very beginning of the event, like after we got coffee and, and muffins and after I talked to this guy, um, I went into the room and we sat next to each other and the first like presentation was with this guy and his slideshow, it was like how to make $50,000 per month. <laughs> and I remember sitting there, like when it popped up, I was like, in my mind, I was like, there's no way. Like, I, I had it just built in my mind. I was like, there's no way. But it was weird because like 10 minutes before that, the guy who told me he's, he's making 20K per month, like I believed him. But for some reason, I was still holding back my beliefs, my belief system. And my belief system was holding me back when I saw the slideshow, like the first five, 10 minutes. And I was just like sitting there kind of like with my mouth open in disbelief with what this guy was talking about. And the guy next to me was taking notes. And I could hear him. He'd be, he was like, oh, man, that's awesome. Like, and he like, would nudge me and be like, yeah, like, you, know, th you need to do this. Like, like when you get home, execute on this thing right here. And, and again, I was just kind of in shock because like, I had never been around anyone who had ever made that amount of money. Like, it seemed fake. And it seemed like almost like there's no way you could do that. And I remember sitting there next to this guy, and when we went on the break, he had this page just filled with notes of all the things he was going to execute on. And and I looked at him and I go, "Hey, how like what, how do you how much do you think that presentation will actually help you?" Because I was like still kind of doubting. And he was like, "Well, he was like, I know if I do these three things, like I should be at thirty k per month." And like 30 days from now. And I was like, are you serious? 
He was like, yeah, like I just need to tweak this, this, and this and, and draw new leads and we'll get there. And he was like, he was like, you should be able to get to, to like 10 K per month pretty quickly. If you do this, this, and this, like, just like the guy said. And again, I was still kind of in shock because it was hard for me to believe that that something like that was possible. And, uh, and I remember going into the next presentation and I sat by myself and I was just, I was like, wow, this is incredible. Like, why, why am I not around these types of people more? And then I started to really think like, man, when I get home, I need to completely change my surroundings. And back then my surroundings, just, I'll just be straight up with you. My surroundings were not good. They were not good at all. I hung out with the same people that I hung out with in high school. Um, they wanted to go drink all the time, every Friday, Saturday, every, like they wouldn't drink all the time. And if, and if I had a conversation with them, like how I had at these, at this conference that I went to, they were just being total disbelief the same way I was. Cause that was the environment that I was in. Like no one ever talked about success. No one ever talked about money. No one ever talked about potential or possibility until like I put myself in this environment. And I remember just being there those next couple of days and I was just soaking in information. I was trying to talk to as many people as I could. And I really pushed myself outside my comfort zone that week. And I realized, like, I just, I need to, like, be around people who are serious about what they're doing. And I remember, like, pretty quickly after that event, I went home. I had this, like, huge notepad filled with all these ideas. And I remember just feeling kind of paralyzed because there were so many different things that I could do. And one of the things that the, that Pedro said, he's the keynote speaker at the end, he was like, look, you learned a lot of information. This is, he's like, this is not a place to just, you know, leave and, and look at your notepad and, and, and have all these great ideas. He was like, you need to pick one thing and do that one thing and do it very well. And I remember it took me like a month to like sift through, like, what is this one thing I need to do? And it was just the thing that was right in front of me. It was like how to improve my marketing. Because like my problem was I didn't have a lot of people that knew about me. So I needed to fix that. And, and again, for me, it was like literally just going out to the fields, talking to people, like wearing my shirt, talking to people, doing it over and over and over. And I did that before, but I wasn't doing it consistent. And I remember like that one little thing, it got me in front of so many parents. It was, it was insane. It was insane. And then I started to learn sales. And then I started to learn how to get people more committed and how to really like get parents locked into six and 12 month contracts and commitments. Like those things happen later. And I remember one of the key things that I did when I got back, and this this might sound crazy, but this this is the truth. I looked at my phone and I went through my contact list and I was like, I was like, man, this person I, I don't need to be around anymore. This person I never talked to anyway, so let's just delete them, block them. And I remember like one of the first things that happened when I got back from that trip, my friends texted me and they were like, Hey, like, let's go out this weekend and tell us about your trip. And I was like, that's cool. Like I'll, I'll tell them how everything went. And I remember we were at dinner and one of the guys was asking me about it and I was telling him and he was like, he could not believe what I told him. And I was like, no, man, like, this is for real. Like, this, these guys are doing this. And I was like, I'm going to do this. And I remember, like, he kind of just looked at me. Like, he completely, it was like he didn't know me when I said that. It was like I was like this alien. And I remember when I looked at him, when I said it, it was like I was dead serious. And 
I could tell he didn't believe it. And I remember, like, it was like maybe a week later, I was sitting by myself and and I was journaling. And I was thinking about something that Bedro said. He, he, again, Bedros didn't make this up. Like, there's millions of people who've said this before, but he was like, the five people you hang out with are the ones you're going to be like. And And he was like, when you go home, you have to be very picky with who these five people are because like there's crabs that are going to keep dragging you back and then there's other people who are the small select group of people that you need to be around they're the ones who are going to lift you up and you'll want to lift them up and I remember that was on my notepad and I thought to myself and I was like how is it going to be possible if if I'm looking to like build this thing and be more successful if I hang out with people who don't think that way. And I asked myself that question and I was like, it's physically impossible. Cause like, I'm just going to go back to the same patterns. I'm going to go out with them on Fridays. Like they'll ask questions about what I'm doing, but they're not really going to care. And it's not that they need to care, but it's like the little things, the little things that people say that speak over you, that, that gets into your mindset. And there were many times before I went on that trip where I would say certain things and my buddies would just like either disagree or just be like, dude, like just get a job. Like, and, and it'd be one of these things. It just, it always crept into my mind and I wanted to make my friends proud and I wanted, I wanted to feel good about what I was doing. But at the end of the day, when I would hang out with them, it, what, it didn't feel that way. And I did something. I, I talked about this piece on a previous podcast a long time ago. And here's what I did. I I called one of those friends and I told him straight up, hey, like, this is what I'm doing and I'm getting rid of my phone. Here's my new phone number. Like, if we hang out in the future and... I sense that you're like, I don't know, we're not on the same level and and you're trying to cut down and, and, and tear apart what I'm trying to do. Like, I'm just not going to spend time with you, man. Like, I'm sorry. And and that's that's how it's going to be. And I remember him saying, he was like, that's fine. Like, he's like, don't worry about it. And I said, cool, well, here's my new phone number. If you ever need to reach me, this is this is where I'm at. And I told the other two guys, I just texted them, like, can't reach me at that at this phone number anymore. I'm deleting it. Uh, if you need my, my new phone number, go ask the other guy. Right? And you know the funniest thing about this is none of those guys that I spent time with have once reached out to me. And I love that. You know why? It's because I think they knew that I wasn't going to just accept what they believe. And I wasn't going to just settle. All right. There hasn't been one time. All right. And everybody else that was in my life during that time. All right. With the exception of my family. I haven't talked to because I looked at across the board, all the other people I spent my time with. If I talked to them about anything business related, it was just, it was a terrible conversation. It was like, it, it just, it went south every time. I always felt bad about what I was doing. I felt guilty about what I felt guilty about working hard. Um, and once I got that new number, it was like, I had this new identity. And once I had that, it was like, I wasn't going to be held back by other people. And then what I realized is, man, who are five people that I need to be around? And so I cut out the, the negative forces. And then I started to seek out people that I wanted to be like. And that's exactly how it was. And I found a business coach in, in Texas that I started meeting up with. Uh, I met people uh, through him that had businesses. So like I got to spend time with people who had businesses and ask them questions and and be around people that I look up to which is very different than people that 
argue with you when you have an idea, argue with you, or, or try to cut you down when you when you are excited about something. Like it's a very, very different type of conversation. And it's funny because I know if I didn't make those decisions back then, I'd still be hanging out with those guys and I would I would I would not be in business anymore. Like it's there's zero percent chance because I would have just bought into that lifestyle that they had, the security that they had. And again, there's nothing wrong with what they were doing. It's just I didn't want to be that way anymore. And I didn't want to spend time with people like that anymore. So I didn't make those types of decisions. All right. Now, this is how things come like full circle. It's because in 2018, I remember sitting with my business coach and I told her exactly what I just told you. And I probably went into more depth with her because she asked me a lot of questions. And she was like, well, a lot of the coaches that you work with, the only time they probably ever talk about their business is when they talk to you. And I was like, yeah, I know. Like, and some of those people I rarely talk to, like, you know, depending on what level of coaching they're getting. And she was like, you need to find a way to put these coaches together so they're around each other. And I remember being very kind of resistant, not resistant to the idea, but I was, I was like, well, that's just going to be so hard to put together. And this was at the beginning of um, 20, actually the beginning of 2017, which she told me about this because by then I was already working with a lot of coaches one-on-one -on -one with their business and every, everything I was doing was one-on-one -on -one coaching. And uh, I was resistant because I just, I didn't know how to put that together. And it was funny. I went to a conference in 2018, and it was specific about setting up like a mastermind program, <clears throat> which is what we have now. And I went and I sat and I talked with this guy, and, and literally in five minutes, he showed me on a napkin what I need to do when I get home and how to group people together and the systems and like he showed me everything in a very short amount of time and i was like gosh it's so funny how when i go to these events by having one conversation with one person it's like so worth going to these events it's because like i'm out i'm out of my city i'm out of my comfort zone i'm i'm in a space where i'm around people who are doing this stuff and uh it's funny i got home i started to implement and later that year we put together our first mastermind program and since then we've had three different masterminds uh with coaches from all over the world and the the thing we do now which is the accelerator program that's serving coaches from multiple countries uh and it's great because it's like it should be an environment where where coaches can go and openly talk about their struggles, openly talk about their success and, and rally around each other and see what's possible. Right. And for example, one of the guys that's in our program, he like a couple days ago, he closed like $7,000 worth of sales. And for people who haven't done that before, or haven't seen that before, they know it's possible because they're seeing one of their teammates in our program do it. Right. And that's really my goal now. It's to bring people together and have that experience to see what's possible and learn more. And that's the whole goal of our coaching program. It's to give coaches that experience because if you don't have that right now, you're going to be hanging out with people who you sink down to their level. And my goal is to to have coaches in our program that are exceptional, that raise the standard of coaching, that raise the standard of business. And that's how everything comes full circle now. Because I remember just being in that event when I was at Bedros's event and just being like, gosh, like, I cannot believe what's going on here. And then leaving and then going through that evolution of cutting out negative people and then seeking out positive people and then, you know, constantly investing into myself and being around people that I want to be like. That's That's been the biggest difference for me. Because... Your conversations are very different when you're talking to someone who has done the thing you want to do and they're supporting your idea versus tearing it down. And that's why now, like, 
I'm, I'm recording this in March of 2022. That's why now, like, I spend very little time with people outside of my business and the people that I do spend time with. Like, and, and again, this sounds really, like, picky when I say this, but the people that I do spend time with have businesses. Like, and I'm talking about the people that I'll go, like, eat lunch with or get coffee with or have, like, a 20-minute Zoom call with. Those people have businesses, and I don't get business advice <laughs> from people who don't have a business anymore. And I used to, and that, that, was, that would mess with me. Now I don't. All right? So if you've listened this far, I think the thing that I want you to get out of this is you need to put yourself in an environment where you can see what's possible. And this is not like a pitch for my program. Our program is great. It works for those who use it and those who execute and those who are in there asking questions all the time. And again, this is one of those things where like, you become who you hang out with. And I, I learned that early on. I did not realize it until I got home from that first trip. And this is why on my end, like one of the things that I'm going to be pushing myself to do is put together an event like that as well, like where coaches can come into Texas and and we can all link up together and network and learn from each other. And uh, that's something I plan on doing in the near future uh, for sports trainers only. And if you listen to this and you look at your surroundings and you're like, gosh, like, I don't need to be around these people anymore. Do what I did. Seriously, get a new phone number. Like getting a new phone number is going to take you 10 minutes. And I think you, you will see how freed up you are when you do that. And that will completely change how you think <laughs> and what you do in the future. All right, so do that. And then start spending time with people that you want to be like. That is the fastest way to grow is by learning and, and understanding, like, what, is, what habits does this guy have or th does this girl have? Like, what are they doing different? That gets you to ask better questions. And, and again, you're going, to, you're going to be exactly like the people you hang out with, which is why you should be incredibly picky. Life is short. Like, there's no need. In, in my mind, there, there is no need to hang out with someone who's negative. And again, you have, you have the choice to do whatever you want. You're an adult. If you're listening to this, you're probably over the age of 21, 22. You get to, you get to decide who you spend your time with. I don't. I don't, I don't get to choose who you hang out with. I don't get to choose who your friends are. Um, and I shouldn't. That's, that's your call. For me, I'm very, very protective with how I spend my time. And uh, you probably should know that by now if you've, if you've listened to my uh, podcast or watching my videos. That's it for today's episode. I hope this helps. Be very careful with who you spend your time with. And strive to to spend time with those who you want to be like that you have like real alignment with that's it if you want to chat with me shoot me a text at 210-960-5771 if you live internationally and you cannot text that number send me an email at build my sports biz at gmail.com